In this lecture, I want to talk a little bit about the process that PHP goes through in order to process a request. Um, and we'll start first by talking about the HTTP process. Okay, so we have our browser over here on the left, and when, whenever you go to a browser and you type in a URL, addre URL address, um, for instance, HTTP colon slash slash something.com, what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and use the HTTP protocol, which stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and it goes out into the web and it looks for this domain name. And the way that uh, the domains work, um, for those of you who are not uh, too sure about that, the way a domain works is that it's uh, registered with a domain registry and it's mapped to a specific static IP address and different providers are given, basically what they do is they buy up ranges of IP, static IP addresses and they basically own those IP addresses and they can dole them out to customers and then you can use a domain registry to map your domain name to a static IP address. So what what's going to happen is that it would go to uh, the DNS server, uh, domain name service uh, server, and it would go ahead and um, map the domain name to the IP address to resolve it. Okay, and the other thing that you can also do is use the HTTPS protocol, which is basically the same thing except that the S on the end stands for secure. So what it's doing is it's actually using uh, encryption and it's uh, pushing it through an encrypted channel so that all of the traffic that goes across the web is actually not in clear text but it actually encrypts it before it sends the request out uh, from the server back down and um, it will unencrypt it to deliver it on the user's end. Alright, let's move on to the next slide and uh, here so what happens whenever you hit that return button, so you're looking for um, something.com, the browser sends out a URL request to find the web page. And the standard port that HTTP uses is port 80. So m almost every web server that's out there is going to use port 80 because that is standard. If for some reason a web uh, a website uses something other than port 80, oftentimes what you have to do is type a colon and then the port number after the uh, address. Um, and for HTTPS, the standard port that it's going to use is port 443. And uh, there's an understanding that that's the way that that port is going to um, tunnel its information through to the Apache server using an encryption uh, method. and then if we move on, the next uh, part of that process is once it uh, goes ahead and connects to that server, that domain, and it grabs the correct port, Apache typically is going to run on port 80 because it's the web service, and it also uh, it will also um, listen to port 443 typically for uh, uh, secure uh, protocols, and as soon as it it gets a request on one of those two ports, it'll take the request and it'll look for the file that is being requested. It'll And the way that it looks for it is it goes into the file system. So you see here we have two separate things. We have the Apache service, which is literally just a set of, of uh, programs um, that is bundled up into one service and it runs as a background service on a server and it listens on those ports and as soon as a request comes in it sees the uh, URL path that is coming through and it says oh I know what to do with that and then it goes into the file system of the server and it looks for a file in this case let's say it's file.php in our case we requested something called something.com and typically your Apache service is going to know if a, if a file name is not specified in the address, of course it's going to know to look for something probably like index.php, not necessarily file.php. Um, and that's always based on how the Apache service is set up. You can set different websites up uh, on a server so that it will recognize different names um, for uh, pages to become the, what I refer to a lot of times as the gateway file 
index, for instance, is a standard gateway file so that if you don't type the file name then and you just type a, a directory path, then it will find that directory and automatically Apache will look for that uh, file name called index.html or index.php and if it's there, it'll open that one up. So anyway, Apache goes and it looks through the file system and when it finds the file, the next thing that it does is it sees that there's a file extension called .php and it says, oh, wait a second, we can't just send it back to Apache and uh, re process the request, we need a little bit of help. Uh, we can't just send it back to the, the standard process. We need to go ahead and invoke the PHP engine. So what it does is it invokes the PHP engine through Apache and you can see here and everything that's sort of in black is the Apache sort of service, things that are running under the umbrella of the, the Apache service. So anyway, it finds the file, it grabs the PHP engine when it sees that PHP extension and it says, okay, start processing anything that's embedded inside the file that has that's within the PHP tags. And uh, then next thing that happens is occasionally you see how these arrows changed up a little bit. Sometimes not only are you reading the file, but sometimes the PHP engine is going to process things like maybe you're actually going to modify the file. Um, there are functions that allow you to open files and write them and modify them and save them back out. Uh, so that's why we've got two errors here back and forth. Um, but that's not always what happens. A lot of times it's just reading it. And then also, if you're tapping into a database, PHP will also do any kind of processing between the database. In this case, I listed MySQL as the service and databases run as services in the background. Um, so if you ever hear someone talking about the MySQL server, um, what, they're probably all, what they're probably talking about is the MySQL service. All right, and so it runs a, as a service in the background and PHP has uh, what's called a, typically like a socket connection. It's a certain kind of special file that is built so that it can uh, talk to MySQL and as long as your PHP is all set up properly, it will connect to the database and it'll query the database through the code and then the uh, database will feed information back into PHP. And this is not an absolute necessary step, the MySQL part. If you don't happen to be tapping into a database, then that part doesn't necessarily happen. But we will get into that later. And that is pretty standard practice for most web, major web pages uh, that are out there that need to read and write a lot of different data for a lot of different pages. Last process is that after it takes that MySQL information and it does all of its PHP processing, it churns it and it digests it out and it returns HTML. So all of the PHP stuff you see, if you actually look at this process, stays on the server. Never is the client supposed to ever see that. Okay, You can see how it goes up to the server, the request for the page goes to the server, it invokes the Apache service, finds the file, that's when it grabs PHP, starts doing its processing, and then it churns it, churns it and spits it back out as HTML. And then lastly, the server is going to send the page back to the browser, and it reloads the page and all the end user is actually going to see if they were to look at the source code is the digested uh, HTML that the PHP ended up processing and then recreating. Alright, and so that is how the process works and uh, hopefully that will help you better understand um, what's going on in terms of uh, you know, when you write the script and then you go to test the script, sometimes you can help yourself troubleshoot where you're running into problems just by merely understanding this process so that you know when the problem might be happening. Okay, and uh, that'll conclude uh, this lecture.